Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at updating our rooted Pixel 3 or Pixel 3 XL to the November security update just released today. Now we'll be doing this using Fastboot and on a computer. So to get started we need a few things done on our phone before we do anything. And the first thing is to make sure that we don't have any substratum overlays enabled. That's if you have installed them. Uh, so you can just go over to the substratum app and then go to manager and then select them all, tap on the floating action button and then tap on disable selected and everything should return to normal. So you don't have to uninstall them, you just need to uh, disable them for the time being. And once you've done that, we can now go ahead to our computer where we'll need to download a few things before we can do anything. And the first thing is the SEK platform tools. Now this is the same stuff we use when we rooted our phones. So if you already have them somewhere, feel free to use the same ones again. Otherwise, you can just download them once more at the link here. So you need to read it and agree to the terms and conditions and click on the blue download link. I'll be saving everything into one folder and I think you should do that as well just to keep things nice and tidy. Now the next thing we need to download is the latest factory image for our Pixel 3 or Pixel 3 XL. Currently there's only three, so let's just select the latest one for November. Click on the blue download link here and that will download the factory image for you. Next up is to download the latest beta version of Magisk, the one that supports the Pixel 3, uh, th Pixel 3 series. So click on the latest beta here. Please don't install the stable. Uh, someone else tried that this morning and their phone wouldn't turn on. And indeed, 17.3 does include support for the Pixel 3. So just be careful which one you're flashing. And the next thing we need to download is the latest version of TWRP for either our Pixel 3 or Pixel 3 XL. So we're going to go ahead to the download links down here and you can see they haven't released any new ones since we rooted our phone. So you can use the same image and install a zip file. So I have those two downloaded as well. So we'll be going ahead and installing TWRP and the same thing should be for the Pixel 3 XL. And this also means that ADB does not work in TWRP for the Pixel 3 XL. And hopefully TWRP can decrypt our data partition this month because that is a likely thing that can happen where the security updates can fix something or change something where TWRP will no longer be able to decrypt the data partition until itself is updated. So just watch out for that when updating, but we'll go through that process when that does happen. So once you have everything downloaded, all you have to do is open up the platform tools zip file. Now, if you already have this extracted somewhere else, feel free to use that as instead of extracting a new one somewhere else. So just wait for this to extract. You want to extract the entire platform tools folder. And once you have that extracted, I want you to go inside. And now we need to bring up a terminal window, a PowerShell window, or a command prompt window uh, to start in this directory here. So to do that, you can actually right click and hold shift at the same time on an empty space inside the folder. And you should be greeted with an option to open the PowerShell window here, or alternatively, it will be open command prompt window here, depending on which version of Windows you have. Now, if you don't see anything there or that's not working out for you, you can also type in CMD in the address bar and hit enter. And that'll also open up a command prompt window with the directory already changed. So do one of those two. I'll be using a console emulator here instead because it has the zoom functionality. And just position your windows accordingly. Now, once you have that sorted, you need to go back to the Android folder here. And from in this folder, we need to open up the factory image and put up the folder inside the factory image. And in here, we need to extract the image zip file, the bootloader image, and the radio image, just these three files, and just drag them outside into our Android folder like so. Give it a moment to extract as some of these are quite large. Okay, so once everything is extracted, you can close the factory image zip file. And from here, we are actually going to copy over the Magisk zip file and or the Magisk installer and also the TWRP installer here as well. Of course, the TWRP installer is optional. You don't have to install it. And we need to copy those to our phone. So again, we need to go back to our phone, come down here and enable this uh, USB connection for file transferring. And once you've done that, you can go back to your computer and you should see the Pixel 3 pop up. Otherwise, just go to this PC open up the Pixel 3, and then open up the internal shared storage. And what you want to do is just paste the things in the root directory. 
and you can replace the things you already have there. I'm going to delete stuff that is irrelevant just to keep things tidy. So you should have the TWRP installer if you want to, optional, but you definitely want the magisk zip file here. Make sure it's the beta version once again, and then you can close that. And after that, we need to reboot our phone into the bootloader. So to do that, we need to go back to our device and hold the power button. I'm going to tap on restart. Make sure your phone is plugged in down below as well. But once your phone is plugged in and ready to go, when you press restart and the screen turns black or it freezes, I want you to hold the volume down button until we boot into the bootloader. So just get ready for that. And now we should hold it and keep holding it until we boot into the bootloader. Okay, then you can let go. And once you've done that, we can go back to our computer here and do the rest of the process. So the first thing we need to do is check that our device is in fastboot. So we're going to type in fastboot devices. This uh, outputs the serial number of our connected device. You can see it match on the screen there. So we know that is the correct one. And the next thing we need to do now that our device is detected, we're going to flash the new bootloader image. So we're going to type in fastboot flash bootloader. Leave a space after the word bootloader and drag in the bootloader image and hit enter. Now this will flash the stuff onto our phone and by stuff I mean the bootloader. And once you've done that, we need to reboot our phone back into the bootloader to ensure that the new one has taken effect. So if you actually keep an eye on the bootloader version on our screen, once we reboot the phone back into the bootloader using the command fastboot reboot dash bootloader, Alternatively, you can actually use the volume buttons to select bootloader here and then press the power button to select it, but we'll use the fastboot command here, hit enter, and you should see our bootloader version get updated here. So it now starts with a 5.0. Now the next thing we need to update is the radio image, also known as the baseband. So we can type in fastboot flash radio, leave a space after the word radio and drag in the radio image and hit enter. And you can see that was very quick. We're going to reboot our phone back into the bootloader once more, and to do that you can actually press the up arrow key on your keyboard to access previous commands, and hit enter on the one that says fastboot reboot dash bootloader. And once your phone is back into the bootloader, we're going to type in our update command, which does the bulk of our updating work, and all you need to do is type in fastboot double dash, so two hyphens, type in the word skip dash reboot, and then type in the word update, Leave a space after update and drag in the image zip file, not the factory image. So just the one that we extracted earlier and hit enter. This will check that our bootloader and baseband versions are correct and then we'll proceed to flash the images inside accordingly. So just give it a second here, it may take a while, uh, but usually up to a minute to do. And afterwards we'll be rerouting our phone in TWRP. Okay, so our images have finished flashing, which is good, no errors there. It just took over a minute. Now the next thing that we need to do is to go into TWRP to flash Magisk again. You'll notice when we did the update command, it flashed the updated boot image, which you know includes our recovery partition. So that means TWRP has been in fact overridden by the stock recovery when we do the update. So we need to boot into TWRP uh, temporarily again to reroute and to also install TWRP if you want to. So we're going to type in fastboot boot, and leave a space after the word boot and drag in the TWRP image for your device, hit enter, and our phone should boot into the TWRP image. Give it a few moments to do so. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. As I mentioned earlier that sometimes the security updates can break TWRP being able to decrypt the data partition. But it looks like, I can't say anything yet because, okay, yes, I can now. So it looks like TWRP is able to decrypt our data partition for this month. But just keep in mind that it may not always be the case. You may get some months where TWRP is unable to decrypt our data partition. So once your data partition has been decrypted, we can now just tap on install and locate the TWRP installer. This is optional again, so you don't have to install this. You can just flash Magisk again. So I'm going to wait for this to finish up. Okay, now we're finished. I'm gonna hit the back button and then just flash Magisk right over that. 
and this will reroute our phone. And this will also keep all your modules intact as well, so you don't have to reinstall anything like that. Okay, we're done now. So we're going to tap on Reboot System, and our phone should just reboot itself into Android, rooted, and all that. So I'm just going to fast forward this until we get back into Android, and then we can just have a look at a few things to double check that we're on the latest version, and that we're still rooted. Okay, our phone has turned on finally. It did take a little bit to turn on, but that's fine. Just give it a few moments. And then you'll have to excuse my launcher for doing something. Okay, so we're back in business. Let's just take a look at our notifications. You can see that the system is just finishing installing the update. That's cool. And if we look at Magisk, we should see that we're still rooted and on the latest version, at least the beta version. We can tap to start the safety net check. Okay, so we're cool and we're good. So we're passing safety net and we're rooted and that is all fine and dandy. Now, if you had to repackage uh, Magisk Manager through this option, you will need to do it again. And I think that's all I need to mention. So thanks for watching guys. Your phone is now rooted and on the November security update and we didn't have to lose any data and the whole process just took roughly 20 minutes. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, if you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave them down below in the comment section, or you can join us over on Discord where we can uh, chat about pretty much anything that you like, or if you need some help on something like that. So thanks for watching again, guys. And as always, happy flashing.